bison hunting was a staple of life on the North American plains for thousands of years. Before the bow and arrow and the horse, Native Americans had to come up with special strategies to hunt herds of these massive animals. At the Skagen site, Middle Archaic Peered Peoples, using my keen, complex technology, were doing just that. Here, Native American peoples trapped bison in a corral before dispatching them. One of the styles of projectile point that they use to hunt these bison with is called the Mallory Point. In this video, I flint nap a Mallory Point and discuss life for people who lived in the plains during this time. The McKean complex dates to a range of around 3,000 to 5,000 years before present, in the Plains Middle Archaic period. During the Plains Middle Archaic, the climate had become cooler and wetter, causing animal and plant life to flourish in the plains. This would have made it easier for people to flourish as well, and the archaeological record of this time seems to reflect that idea. During this time period, Archaeological sites increase in density and distribution, and people use multiple settlement, subsistence, and toolkit strategies. Plains Middle Archaic peoples were hunter-gatherers. Many people during this time moved residentially to exploit plant resources as they became available and to make use of animal movement. Native Americans from this time seem to have been practicing limited food storage for lean periods of the year when food was less available. This may have been the reason that during parts of the year, it appears that they were able to decrease their residential mobility. It is likely that communal hunts were organized during certain parts of the year to efficiently hunt animals like bison in corrals and jumps. This probably involved community participation of multiple hunter-gatherer groups who didn't normally live together. In addition to bison, they hunted a variety of small to big-sized game. McKean complex people are identified archaeologically by diagnostic projectile point styles. These styles include McKean lanceolate, Duncan, Hannah, and Mallory point styles. There is some overlap in Duncan and Hannah points, some archaeologists lump these together as being the same style.
Mallory points are thin, side-notched, and have parallel sided margins. A basal concavity or notch extends into the base and tends to be wider than the side notches. Some of these side notches on Mallory points are very narrow and expand into the piece. Mallory points and the other styles associated with the McKean complex were usually made from flake blanks struck from bifacial cores. These flake blanks didn't require much thinning, mostly just shaping and contouring. Occasionally, McKean complex points are found with part of the original flake scar surface still intact, since little material had to be removed from these blanks. The flake pattern left by extensive pressure flaking on these points is usually random, but can occur in a parallel collateral pattern. Occasionally, Mallory points have needle tips. These projectile points were primarily used as hunting implements and were used secondarily as butchering tools, as discussed later in this video at the Scoggin site. It has also been suggested by one researcher that Mallory points and McKean lanceolate points, the other style found at Scoggin, were used as thrusting spears instead of as at lateral darts. This researcher suggests that at sites like Scoggin, where the intended prey animals were confined, using thrusting spears made more sense than thrown darts from an atlatl. In this hypothesis, Duncan and Hannah points would have been used as atlatl dart tips instead, but these are not found at Scoggin. Impact fractures and microware traces are more or less identical on a projectile point from use as either an atlatl point or a spear point. Unless one of these points is still found attached to a preserved wooden shaft, we will not know what weapon system it was a part of. The Scoggin site is a Middle Plains Archaic bison kill site in mid-southern Wyoming. The site lies at the base of a small ridge near Coal Creek Canyon in the Haystack Mountains. The Scoggin site contains the remnants of a bison killing corral at the base of a small cliff, with an extensive bison kill bone bed and food processing features. 103 projectile points and projectile point fragments were found here. Diagnostic points and projectile point fragments found at Scoggin belong to the McKean complex, specifically the Mallory and McKean lanceolate types. 25 of the former and 23 of the latter were found at Scoggin. 
The rest of the projectile points were too fragmentary to be identified as any type. Curiously, only 97 pieces of debitage were found at the site. At most archaeological sites, debitage, the byproduct of making stone tools, is far more abundant than finished tools. Most of these pieces of debitage at Skagen are thought to be from either tool resharpenings or from impact fractures. Researchers also believe that this resharpening occurred on projectile points that the hunters took away from the site for later use, rather than on the points that were lost or discarded at Skagen. Only one flick at Skagen shows a resharpening and uses a butchery tool. The material that I'm flint napping this Mallory point from is a Knife River flint. This material occurs in Dunn and Mercer counties of North Dakota. Sources of stone that were used by the people at Scoggin to make their stone tools include Wyoming Tiger Chert, Black Mountain Chert, Algolitic Chert, Agatized Wood, and a number of other materials. Other lithic resources available to Middle Plains Arcade people would have included a variety of sources of chert, quartzite, agate, chalcedony, jasper, and porcelainite that can be found all over the Northern Plains region. The area in which the McKean complex is found archaeologically ranges from the north in Alberta, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan all the way south to Utah, Colorado, and Nebraska and all the states in between these.
bison corral is the feature that defines the Skagen site. Plains people made use of several techniques for hunting herds of bison. The most famous of these techniques is the bison jump, where bison were stampeded off a cliff and either killed or maimed by the fall. Bison corrals use a feature of the natural landscape to drive the herd into an enclosed space where they can be dispatched more easily than in the open. Here at Skagen, the bison were driven off a sandstone cliff into a wooden pen. This cliff wasn't high enough to kill the bison or cause substantial injury from the fall. Instead, it served as the entrance for trapping the bison and also served as the northeast wall of the corral. 27 post holes have been found near the base of the cliff, and these would have been useful for holding the poles for the walls. These posts would have formed two fences that intersected each other at right angles. It is unknown what was used to fill the gaps between these vertical posts. Horizontal poles could have been used, or something like sagebrush or even animal hides as well. Evidence of repair suggests that the corral at Skagen was used more than once. One of the post holes has a left bison humerus intentionally jammed into it, seemingly to tighten and stabilize the post that would have been within the hole. Based on the aging of bison mandibles at Skagen, archaeologists know that the bison here were killed at two different times in the year, in an event during the summer to early fall, and in an event during the late fall to early winter. Once the panicked bison were driven off the cliff into a corral, a group of hunters would have been able to dispatch them easily from in their confinement. At ladles or spears would have worked equally well for this task. Once the bison were dead, it is likely that the whole community would have taken place in processing. Since flakes do not make up much of the assemblage at Skagen, the butchery would have taken place using the projectile points as cutting implements. This is a great case for the points being hafted to a removable foreshaft from the end of a spear or at lateral dart shaft, since this foreshaft would act as a knife handle. One definite cooking pit and four other possible shallow cooking pits were recovered at the Skagen site. As soon as the bison were skinned and processed, people would have set to work cooking the meat and drying it out for later consumption.